Let's do another example of Gauss's law, this time with planar geometry. So the question we're interested in is, what is the electric field of an infinite flat sheet of charge with some uniform charge density sigma? So let's just draw some axes here and call the direction perpendicular to the plane the z direction. So one of the first questions we want to answer is, in what direction does the electric field point? And certainly for an infinite sheet of charge, the electric field should point directly away from the sheet of charge. In uh, mathematical terms, that means the electric field should only point in the z direction or in the k-hat direction. Okay, but we can be a little bit more specific. We can actually say that the electric field should also only depend on the z direction. So the electric field should just be some function of z pointing in the z direction. Um, and that's because, of course, it shouldn't depend on the x and y directions. It's an infinite sheet. It only depends on your distance from the sheet itself. There's a symmetry in the plane. It shouldn't depend on those directions. Once we have the direction of the electric field, one of the next steps for Gauss's law is to pick a Gaussian surface that's appropriate. And usually we want to pick a Gaussian surface so that the dot product E dot dA is either one of two things, either zero or just E times dA with no dot product. So E times dA is when electric field and the areas are in parallel directions, and zero is when they're perpendicular. So there's two choices we can make here. So let me draw two different planes here, just to illustrate these two choices. And so one choice of a Gaussian surface would be a tube here that extends above and below the plane. And so the tube has some cross-sectional area, call it A, and it's some height z above and height z below the plane. So that's one such choice. You could also make a rectangular box here, extending again above and below the plane, where the height above the plane is z, and there's some cross-sectional area a, uh, and again, it also extends z below the plane. Either of these would work. Uh, just as a notation, both of these are called Gaussian pillboxes. Um, they're also surfaces, closed surfaces, but we uh, give a special name to them, Gaussian pillbox. Okay, just for a point of reference, the electric field, once again, should be pointing away from the plane in the z direction, uh, whichever Gaussian box that you use. Um, and it's also useful to show the direction of dA, the perpendicular area vector, on each of these surfaces. So for the tube, and then for the box, dA points horizontally outwards along the x and y directions, uh, and then top and bottom it points up and down. OK, so now that we've got our Gaussian surface, we can compute the flux integral, the closed surface integral of E dot dA. And no matter which one you choose, which pillbox you choose, this is going to consist of three different parts. So there's a surface integral over just the top. There's a surface integral over just the bottom. And then there's a surface integral over the side of the Gaussian pillbox, whichever pillbox you use. So let's look at each in turn. So let's do the surface integral of E dot dA over the top of the Gaussian pillbox. So whichever one you look at, you notice that E and dA are pointing in the same direction. And so you can write this as E z hat times dA in the z hat direction. Uh, z hat dot z hat is, of course, just 1. And so you get E times dA. The electric field only depends on z, doesn't depend on anything involving the x and y directions, which is where the area depends. So you can pull it out. And so you just have E times A for the surface integral of the top. By a similar reasoning, you can find that the E dot dA for the bottom, the surface integral of that, is the same thing, E times A. Uh, and again, note that the electric field and dA are still parallel below on the bottom of the surface because the electric field, again, points down as does dA. Okay, and so the last one we have to do is the surface integral of E dot dA over the side. And we notice that E and dA are perpendicular, and so this is always zero, whichever pillbox you use. So that's the flux integral part. 
And so the total flux integral is just 2 times the electric field times A, where the factor of 2 comes from the top and bottom. Notice we didn't actually need to specify our Gaussian uh, pillbox either. We just need to know a cross-sectional area A. That was all we really need to know. OK, the next step is to calculate Q enclosed for our surface. And so let's redraw our plane and one of our Gaussian surfaces. So let's choose the cylinder extending above and below the plane. And Q enclosed is this little bit of charge enclosed by our surface here along the plane. So Q enclosed here is sigma times the area of that little bit. And so here that's just sigma times the cross-sectional area A of our cylinder. OK, so now we can put Gauss's law together, the two halves of Gauss's law together. The flux of the electric field through the Gaussian surface equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. And so that's 2e times a equal to sigma times a. The a's cancel. And, well, there's an epsilon naught here. So you have sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And notice that this is actually independent of the distance z from the plane. And that's actually a really important result. So for an infinite sheet, you, the electric field doesn't depend on how far away you are from the plane. We can be a little bit more precise. The electric field uh, points away from the plane, above and below, and so it points in opposite directions depending on whether you're above or below the plane. Uh, we can write that as a piecewise defined function. The electric field is positive sigma over 2 epsilon naught for above the plane, z greater than 0, and negative sigma over 2 epsilon naught below the plane. Graphically, we can draw a graph of this of the electric field as a function of z. And, well, so um, above the plane for z greater than 0, you have sigma over 2 epsilon naught. Below, you have a minus sign. And notice that there's this discontinuity at z equal to 0, which corresponds to the surface itself.